One of my favorite places in Bellingham is Qualicum Harbor. No matter what the weather may be, it's always fun to come on down, watch the commercial and pleasure boats. But, as a firefighter, I'm also trained to see each one of these boats as a floating vessel of flammable liquids, encased in a flammable shell, complete with an electrical system for ignition. Does that sound too dramatic? Well, let's consider some of the recent history of marina fires here in the Northwest. Now, three boathouses on fire at the Columbia... In Portland, January 2006. Three million dollars damage. This is terrible. Gig Harbor, August 2005. Nine point three million dollars damage. So why are these fires so costly? Well, for one thing, boats are expensive. Another, marina space is very, very scarce. That means the greatest number of boats has to be put into the least amount of space possible. And when a fire occurs, it can travel from one boat to the next very quickly. And marinas are located in very environmentally sensitive areas. The cost of containing oil spills and raising sunken boats adds millions onto the damage costs. And there is the human factor considered. Boat crews can always be present, and there are a number of liveaboard residents who call this harbor their home. So how does the Bellingham Fire Department deal with these challenges? Well, like most other agencies, we find that a combination of land-based and water-based assets are necessary to do the job. First, let's look at the water side. Today, we're going to join the Fire Bells crew as they leave their Dima Road station and come down for their weekly boat practice. All right, stand by for starboard engine start up. The Fire Bell was purchased by the Port of Bellingham in 1985 and is operated by specially trained members of the Bellingham Fire Department. The boat is 36 feet long and has roughly the same pumping capacity as a fire engine. Most people tend to think of a fire boat as a floating water cannon, and that's what we're going to be practicing today. Here, we're preparing our deck gun to put a solid stream of water on a fixed object. You might think we would have someone on deck to simply aim at the right spot, but the pushback force of this nozzle would move the boat all over the place. So, we point the deck gun straight ahead and use a combination of twin propellers and rudder to put the stream right where we want it. Balancing nozzle reaction, wind, and waves can be difficult and requires a lot of practice. Another standard procedure for fireboat crews is fighting a simulated dock fire. Here, we try to move the water stream back and forth underneath the dock. The practice of crabbing uses nozzle reaction to push us sideways while using just enough propeller and rudder force to keep us close. Creosote coated pilings require a lot of water to extinguish. This is an area that a land-based crew simply can't touch. Now let's look at how we work with a shore-based crew to extinguish a fire. Today's drill is a simulated fire on the marine spill response vessel RV Western Gull. Our first priority is always life safety. So as the fire bell approaches the boat, it searches for victims which may still be aboard or have been blown into the water. Next comes protecting the adjacent boats which may be exposed to the fire. Next, we attack the fire directly. Once the bulk of the fire has been knocked down, the fire bell moves to support the engine crew on the dock. For safety reasons, the deck gun is never used when the shore crew is attacking the fire. And if the shore crew needs additional hoses or another way off a burning boat, we're there to help them. The land crew does have the option to use the port's built-in standpipe, but in today's oil fire scenario, they will need the special foam carried on the fire bell. Well, I hope this demonstration shows why we believe the best way of dealing with a boat fire is through a combined shore and water-based attack. But for voters, still, your best bet is prevention. Please follow all the regulations set up by the Coast Guard and the Port of Bellingham. Remember, your fire can become your neighbor's fire in a hurry. As for the rest of the public, come on down and enjoy the view. Just watch out for the seagulls.